What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to another, um, we're just going to put this in the kind of the beginning, the end all, where you should start, video for the build secret stuff, so rotary engine build tips, whatever you want to call it, the, the playlist that this is in. So, where I wanted to bring you, or why I wanted to show you this, this is very simple, this is just a book, we're not actually doing anything crazy in this video, but I wanted to show you this. So, this right here, rotary engine overhaul criteria and criteria for replacement parts. I can read. Mazda. This is free to all of you guys on the internet. There's a place online called foxed.ca. Um, and basically it's like a website with a whole bunch of old rotary stuff. I mean, they've got like Mazda RX-7 manuals and stuff like that. So I'll put the text of it up here so basically what this is showing you is how you can save money building your engine by making sure that the parts you have already are not out of spec right so in the book you've got it's going to go through and tell you like rotary troubleshooting stuff like if you have high oil consumption if it's overheating inadequate compression there's going to be things in here that'll be like checking Doing your compression test, um, judgment criteria of the compression, like racing, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, for example, here's a nice flow chart. High oil consumption. Is oil consumption rate, rate experienced by customers at less than whatever, whatever miles per quart? If yes, you go this way. If no, guide the you, you know, et cetera. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward to the things that are going to be important for rebuilding an engine, okay? And uh, I'll see if I can link this PDF in the in the contents below. So, what's important in here, and basically we're going to kind of just buzz through all this stuff. So basically you can inspect the criteria to reuse your rotor housings based on what Mazda would say is okay or not. So, you have criteria here showing you like the depth of the scratches, where to measure them. Here, the thickness of your rotor housing is it has it deteriorated, gotten thinner, worn, right? Um, but also, is it not straight or is it like worn in some area versus the other? So, those things to consider. Keep moving on here. Dog is going crazy. All right, so this is another important, important one right here. So, chipping of the chrome. So, this right here is going to show you. To replace the chipping if it extends more than two millimeters. And there's kind of a nice illustration of it. So a lot of the housings I've got have chrome coming off them. They're 40 years old. You can't expect things to stick around that long. So, yeah. Not that I usually measure it two millimeters, but I to give it a good visual inspection, right? So, same thing over here. The surfaces around your spark plug holes. The surfaces, whether you got um, like scarring or anything in there, this stuff as well. Your coolant passages will corrode. So has it corroded so far that the coolant seals, or that this is prone to failure? Given this is on a housing, so this is for an older motor. The newer engines have the coolant seals in the iron themselves. Similar thing here, moving towards again overheating. Um, I've never seen a plate that's warped. But uh, we have checked them to make sure they're warped. Um, and I can show this process in a video shortly. Um, here you can see they're doing it with kind of like a, a dial caliper, like an in-play gauge and moving it around. Um, you can also do it with like a fancy straight edge. You can buy on the internet a perfectly straight to like hundredths of a thousandth tolerance straight edge. You lay that on there, make sure no feeler gauges fit under it of a certain size. Your irons aren't warped. So, moving even further through the book here, you've got things to check for like step wear around the edges of your irons. So, um, to the guy that commented, like, how many times could you reuse your irons? Yeah, it depends on how hard the engine was ran. Other different wear items just to help you, give you the criteria to be able to check them. Same thing here. Some engines, if you've taken them apart for, uh, you know, other reasons, your apex seals might still be in spec. Um, some of these things might fail because of a side seal. They might fail because of a corner seal and the apex seals could be fine and they could be well within usable range. So there's no sense in replacing that necessarily. 
Same thing, you can check to see if the apex seals are chipped and damaged, which that should be a pretty easy visual inspection. Um, moving back through here, they have criteria as far as like your height of the apex seal. Should show you where's the apex seal springs come on. Okay, here's another thing too. This is the corner seal like groove tool kind of thing. You can uh, clean these out. Make sure they're right or no. I guess that's a go no go in to see if that has been crushed in. Um, let's see, oil control ring, inspecting those, inspecting the thickness of your oil control ring housings. Um, this kind of shows you right here how to check the gap between the side seal and the corner seal. So that's something else we can do in this series. Um, come on, there's one in here that shows the, the springs. All right, so here's, this is a nice section view of the oil seals there. Good, bad, the ugly of those. And so this is the stroke B, so that's the, the amount of uh, spring that it has up and down. Apex seal springs is what I wanted to show you, the uh, whether the tips are worn or they're bent in the middle. Um, replace if the spring is less than half of a new one. So if you have one new one, they're like 30 cents, you can compare all your old ones or replace all the springs um similarly here if your e-shaft is out or has bad run out which is basically means that the front of the e-shaft does this number um so yeah here's also timing chain or your timing chain your oil pump chain um and as far as like an actual oil pump failure um so as far as an oil pump failure goes, Atkins Rotary has never experienced an oil pump failure in all of their years with rotary engines. Um, I've never seen one fail. I've seen some of them have some pretty gnarly like scarring on the inside, but that wouldn't necessarily mean that it didn't make oil pressure. Um, there is variations in the oil pump, so you have different thicknesses, different volumes, like a Turbo 2 oil pump is going to put out more volume than like... Um, like in a one you can actually see ooh, you can actually see the difference in the thickness of the the pump drive itself um, in play so this kind of goes over measuring those spacers um, and yeah so anyways this is a free 40 page when you print it off two sides um, little book that I would highly recommend if you're going to rebuild your engine at least looking through this you know print it off it's free it's a pdf or just look at it on your computer and look through everything make sure you kind of understand all of the different you know things that could be wrong or can go wrong or have broken or wear items etc inside the engine before you go and spend 2500 bucks on a master rebuild kit because you may not need all of it and I know that I'm not the only one that likes to put stuff together on a budget and save money where I can. You know, nobody's, not all of us are super made of money or have FDRX7s and stuff, you know. So us first-gen guys kind of got to fight for what we got. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a good way to, to budget your build. Figure out what you can and can't reuse. There's no problems in reusing old parts. Um and go from there when you go to build your engine. And uh, like I said, this series, you know, the, the playlist will be linked up here again. Um, this series should basically, you know, if you've caught it mid-series, if you catch it a year from when this video is produced, um, this series playlist should outline everything you're going to need to know um, when it goes to building an engine. Now, I'm not some professional pack racing performance shop, but... I got rotary cars that run, I got rotary cars that run really well, and I got engines that hot start and cold start. So I feel like I'm doing something right, um, or at least good enough. So thank you guys a whole bunch for watching. Uh, if you want to stick around and, and see how this playlist grows, and if you have comments or questions about anything and I can make a video about it, let me know. Um, these more detailed videos are easier for me to make because... Well, I have just about, you know, six engines torn apart, um, and it doesn't take me much time to film them. Um, especially, like, right now, I'm just doing stripping and painting and stuff on the inside of this car. So, that's stuff that's hard for me to show. So, it's nice to be able to film these in the, in the interim. So, let me know in the comments below if you got any questions. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it rad.